In our last video, we already described the white adipose tissue as an endocrine organ and showed you how the metabolic syndrome induces important changes in the structure and functioning of this tissue. As we said, obese adipocytes become hypertrophic and there is an inf infiltration of classically activated macrophages, which produce several molecules which trigger low-grade systemic inflammation. A very important hallmark in the metabolic syndrome. Now we are going to explain to you what low-grade systemic inflammation means. Systemic low-grade inflammation has major difference to a classic inflammatory response, as you know it, for example, from an infected bound. You heard it before, when more and more fat is stored in fat cells, it gets a bit uncomfortable in the tissues. There are more and more immune cells that occupy what little space is left. Along with that, the access to oxygen becomes less, which lets adipocytes die. That again attracts immune cells to remove the dead cells, and a vicious cycle is started. Yes, this is one of the first mechanisms involved at the onset of low-grain inflammation, the inflammation of the white adipose tissue. Low-grade systemic inflammation is characterized by high circulating levels of active inflammatory cytokines. In addition to tumor necrosis factor, we see several interleukins, such as 1-beta, 6, and 17. Also, acute phase proteins, like C-reactive protein, which is actually produced in the liver and rises in the plasma. Besides macrophages, we also see an increase in immune cell infiltrations, like T lymphocytes, not only in the white adipose tissue, but also in other insulin-dependent tissues, mostly the liver and the skeletal muscle. In contrast to a classical inflammatory response, which can also lead to some tissue damage that later has to be repaired, low-grade systemic inflammation does not cause severe damage in the tissue. However, the inflammation is difficult to resolve and easily gets chronic. While the inflammation does not induce any structural changes or loss of primary function, it still promotes insulin resistance and also the development of atherosclerosis, which we will discuss in the unit about the heart. Due to its close relationship with the development of metabolic syndrome, low-grade systemic inflammation has recently been referred as a meta-inflammation or metabolic inflammation. Since our focus is the adipose tissue, let's follow up what happens here. The large amount of fatty acids stored in adipocyte might exacerbate oxidative processes such as lipid peroxidation. Uh, yeah, I don't like lipid peroxidation. My lipids change because they get oxidized. This produces a lot of cellular oxidative stress, and I cannot do anything about it. Yes, this process is characterized by a considerable rise in reactive species of oxygen and nitrogen, including superoxide ions and nitric oxide. A consequence of this oxidative explosion is the recruitment of numerous immune cells from the periphery to the white adipose tissue. And you know already what happens then. It enhances the local level of inflammation, characterized by a rise in inflammatory proteins such as TNF, and the reduction in anti-inflammatory and insulin-sensitizing proteins. And here I want to mention interleukin-10 and adiponectin. At this point, we can ask ourselves a very interesting question. How is low-grade inflammation related to insulin resistance? During the metabolic syndrome, the inflammatory mediators such as TNF secreted from the classically activated macrophages bind to receptors present in adipocytes and trigger an intracellular signaling cascade that leads to the activation of the two proteins that we see here. JNK and IKK are the central mediators inside the cells that lead to inhibition of insulin action, thus directly linking the inflammatory response and insulin resistance. Remember how insulin works, like a key in a lock. 
When TNF is present, the key is not opening the door anymore as it should. With this, we come to the end of this video, where we talked about the so-called low-grade systemic inflammation process that is associated with the metabolic syndrome and how it is associated with insulin resistance, a key feature of the metabolic syndrome.